Oh, and so cats and most countries are very geographically contained on a map. Even island nations and archipelagos tend to be found in the same corner of our planet. However, the UK is a weird exception because none of that is true and instead it spreads itself across every continent that matters, sorry Australia, and nine separate time zones. In fact, parts of the UK are famous for things that are nothing to do with the mainland, such as financial fraud, famous holiday destinations, war with Argentina, okay maybe that last one's related, uh, but regardless of what you think of the UK's colonial leg legacy around the world that leaves it with all of these territories, most people under scrutinize the things which exist inside of Europe. Indeed, most people might not even know there are territories of the UK which are in the European continent, but there is a place which is divided between two separate countries, and then the UK is just chilling there too. There's a whole place that had a referendum on joining the United Kingdom. It passed and we decided to go no anyway. And then there is also Gibraltar, one of the most famous, a place which famously seems to be in the UK for some purposes, but they are outside of the UK for their government, their current and even their climate, are you legally British if it doesn't rain on you multiple times a week? And so legally speaking, it might be British, but does it feel more like its neighbor to the north, its very, very large one, or like the people who own it? I think the only logical way is to go there and find out, because they do in fact have an airport. It takes up a huge percentage of the country, but let's see what's happening in Gibraltar. <laughs> not separating domestic international terminals is you get to use the international lounges even on these short flights and so I'm gonna have the best stand down noodles in the world. Interestingly they did check my passport before boarding. Is it really a domestic flight? The answer is yes. Fun fact, on British domestic flights you do have to show ID. For most airlines it's just revenue reasons uh, but it is indeed a check you have to do meaning I show my passport even though I'm just going to the UK. Hey. Right after landing, an immigration officer did check my passport, but they literally checked it. Like they glanced at it, said it's British and went, eh, go on then. I do have a non-EU citizen with me. They got a fun stamp though. So immigration wise, it looks like it's a bit more gray than I was thinking. The only true way to tell if somewhere's British is to head into town and see what it feels like. Which side of the road do they drive on? What, what currency do they use? Let's, let's dive into all these questions. I'm actually excited to see what an ATM will give me as a British citizen. So I'm gonna find one. I'm gonna pull some money out of it. Although first, I guess it should be worth mentioning, there is a Gibraltarian flag here, right next to a British one. And then on the other side, there's a Spanish flag. I'm longing for the McDonald's that's over there. But sadly, I have to cross an international border to get it. Uh, and then if you look at license plates, another weird quirk, you can see that you have Spanish plates, E for España, but also GBZ plates. But the GBZ plates have an EU flag on them. So where are we right now? This is one of those questions that I think we'll learn more as we go through but I am crossing the border later to tweet their McDonald's. I promise you I will do it. One more thing that really excites me is I love when you can walk from the airport to the city, but in Gibraltar, it's not just that it's only a half an hour walk from the very center of the country uh, to the airport. It's the fact that when you do do that walk, you have to walk over this, which seems pretty non-assuming at first until you realize. This right here is Gibraltar's airport. I am now walking over the runway, maybe a taxi. I'm pretty sure the runway though, and it's pretty cool because it's not just that you can walk on the fair field. Usually these things are so secured. Right now I am one very illegal run from jumping aboard that British Airways flight. They wouldn't fly with me on it, but it's oh, this is so bad stuff. In this case, we're going right through it. And according to this machine, after going through many a screen, we are in England, apparently. Oh. So where are we right now? Well, according to the ATM in the UK. But what about other points of reference? Well, let's go find out. The phones are British. The post boxes are red with the Queen's sigil on it. I think she might be dead now. The road signs are in English, but also are give way instead of stop, unlike many other countries. But the buildings are vibrantly colored, like we're in Spain or something. And they drive on the right hand side of the road, like in mainland Europe. It's insanity, I tell you. Pharmacy with an odd LED screen out front of it. 
Spanish slash European. No e-scooters allowed, very much like the UK. I think four fish and chip places right next to each other. And that's not like the UK or Europe, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> that, is, this, is this what people come to Gibraltar for? To eat questionable looking fish and chips and pet the pigeons? Not to pet the pigeons. Also, window shutters in every building, including this one I'm standing in front of, very European. And I could do this comparison all day, but instead I've got a speed run checklist that I need to get through off every single major site in Gibraltar from someone who lived here. And so the first thing is the monkeys. The only monkeys native to the mainland European continent, but it's gonna be a very uphill walk to get there, so expect me to be exhausted and out of breath. I'm exhausted from taking a walk up to the monkeys, so maybe you'd appreciate knowing a tiny bit about the history of why there even is a Gibraltar. Over there, if you can see what looks almost like a cloud is actually a giant mountain, that is the African continent. Over here is, of course, the European continent, and that strait right there, the Strait of Gibraltar, is one of the most key pieces of waterway to control in the world. If you control that, you control the movement of ships, trade or military, in and out of the entire region. Basically, any trade going anywhere in the world that's not going the long way around the Horn of Africa has to come through here. And so the British controlling this, getting in a sneaky treaty, is one of the most incredible things because by holding this, the increase in our ability to control various islands around the world was massively increased. And the fact that a place with 30,000 residents can hold off against 50 million just over the border, it's because of guns, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, very well, very well defensible place. A big rock surrounded by ocean means that even with numbers that bad, Spain wants it back. But I mean, they don't have it back, do they? And this, look how close I am to a monkey. Goodbye, Mr. Monkey. I love you very much. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And they're doing it literally right in front of me. He's, is he checking in for bugs? Oh, <laughs> he doesn't even care that I'm here. Their butts are so ugly. <laughs> Is it okay if I touch you? Oh, it's not okay. Oh, she does not like that. Oh, oh, that is, he is, he is making a display about how much he doesn't like me touching him right now. I will not be doing that again. <laughs> Okay, I got incredibly close to monkeys. They were scratching each other. They were showing me some things I probably can't show on the internet. And uh, in general, being very cute until someone chased them away. Uh, I have seen monkeys. I hope I see more. But the second thing that my Gibraltarian friend told me to do is to go and see St. Michael's Cave. It's convenient enough on the way to the third thing we're doing. But yeah, there's a cave that is meant to be lovely. One of the seven things you've got to do in Gibraltar. I'll trust it. <laughs> This is a very weird walk, by the way. It's been very, very steep. I'm so happy to be walking on flat ground again. You can see just that, that city over there is where we landed just over an hour ago. It's crazy. <laughs> The second thing I needed to do was St. Michael's Cave. This is one of the oldest parts of the Gibraltar Peninsula. It's been around long before the British or the Spanish, and this is a surreal thing to look around. It really is a dripstone cave, my first time inside one, and funnily enough, during World War II, this was planned to be a hospital, and while trying to make a second entrance, they actually just found a whole second cave this side. Anyway, after fully exploring the cave, I had to go further up the mountain for the third thing we had to do, which meant going past a lot of monkeys, very cute as always, but the third thing that we had to do well here was the Skywalk, and with a name like Skywalk, who do you think they brought in to open it? Yes, Mr. Skywalker himself. I am explaining this in the background audio, but my microphone sounds terrible. And so yeah, Mr. Skywalker actually opened this. How fun. From up here, you get a really interesting view of the east side of the island, which as best I can tell is just a single road and a beach, but still an interesting view nonetheless. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not liking this experience. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> the fourth thing I had to see, according to my friend, is the main town street. And honestly, it is the main street here or whatever, but it feels very much like a cutesy little town, which makes sense on a population level, but also just feels wrong given how big that mountain just was. But yeah, this is Gibraltar. There's no fish and chips here.
The final thing you've got to do in Gibraltar, especially when time is running out and you need to leave the country soon, is to work out for sure whether it really is more British or more European, and the way you answer that question is McDonald's. Will it be a British McDonald's menu, or indeed something unique to Gibraltar, or will it just be the Spanish one? I am fairly curious, actually. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a random takeaway order, and I'm gonna see this Mook Extreme, and then just vibe out the rest of the menu. Like, what's new right here? Oh. Lots going on, some salads, a donut, some shaker fries, riscaritos, and uh, just as a vibe check, here are all of the, actually wait, just sandwich, me no meals please. Menu for you. I have no idea what's going on here. This, this isn't a British McDonald's menu. Everything here feels vaguely unique, like extreme bourbon barbecue egg. It sounds pretty good though, so is this Spanish or did they make something new? I'm guessing the first one. But let's go to the border and find out. Update from just before the border. Uh, very scary. The car rental company are closing and they're like, ah, guess you won't have a car to get you over to where you need to be tonight. My hotel is in a very different city a couple of hours away. So it's a little scary. But the only thing I can do at this point is walk to Spain, which means crossing the road right now. That was my first ever border crossing on foot, by the way. It was very strange. They have an interpreter woman to help between the border people and the everyone else. It feels like they probably could have just, you know, something, something bilinguality, but I'm not here to judge EU rules. Instead, what I'm here to do is say, wow, doesn't it look majestic from this angle? I'm now in Spain and the EU. I've had my passport stamped. And you know the first thing you have to do when you enter a new country? You see it. It's the one from earlier. It's been calling me all day. McAuto or McDonald's. Not in a car yet. I don't know if I will be later, actually. That's a, that's a big point of confusion right now. See how that works. Oh, the Mook Extreme is here too. I guess the only real question is, are things more expensive here? Um, wait, does that mean I can get the bourbon barbecue egg full medium menu? It does mean I can get that. It is interesting that the menu looks very much the same, and so therefore, McDonald's in Gibraltar is just Spanish McDonald's, but with pounds instead of euros. And so, therefore, we can logically conclude you know, the sovereignty dispute, it looked like it was going in the UK's favor, but I mean, clearly looking at this, it's something different. Actually, the, the one drink, the one thing I got is I got a, a coffee with ice cream. It was £1.50 in Gibraltar. It's €1.80 here. I, off the top of my head, that exchange rate means go to Gibraltar when you want McDonald's if you're Spanish. Even though I desperately wanted to try the Spanish McDonald's, I had to get out of there immediately because I needed to be in the nearby city. Even if I paid the 50 euro fee, I needed to be there within an hour or the guy wasn't going to give me the car, which meant I had to go on a little bit of a bus journey adventure. And fun thing, a lot of cities don't have accurate Google Maps buses. And so we went to the bus station looking for the 611. There was no 611. Locals kept pointing me to different buses. And eventually I found one that said it was going to the right city, but the driver was leaving in two minutes and only took euros. And do you know what I pulled out of an ATM earlier. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally sprinted through the bus station looking for any solution to this, maybe another ATM, and I saw a convenience store and just pulled out my £10 and said, you know, exchange for euros, and that was a beneficial deal. She apparently saw it that way, and so I got my €10, Euros, got on the bus, and here is what I ended up with, by the way. Whole pile of money. Very cheap bus to go this distance, I thought, and that's why I hoped it was going the right way, and thankfully it did, and all of my worries went away after that point. Okay, quick update is we made it to Terminal D. Algeciras, I believe. Uh, I think that means it's a bus station. And now I'm walking towards what I really hope is the place where my rental car is. There's a guy who's WhatsApping me constantly, making sure everything's good. And all we need to do now is make sure we grease the wheels, make everything good, and pick up the car despite the place having been closed for over an hour. Will it work? Am I in the right place? It was a scary bus ride, that's for sure. But let's find out. Okay, update. This is definitely the budget, I think, but the guy is not here, and uh, I haven't got a response to the WhatsApp messages, so I might be stranded in a random Spanish city, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> I'm a little worried, but I'm gonna hide that behind saying it's an adventure. Who knows where I'll end up. Thankfully, the guy did show up. He charged me 50 euros, but also VAT, and so triple the price of the rental. But after a dark drive with some odd signs, I ended up in Seville. 
Bit of a morning update for you. Got to the hotel incredibly late last night, kind of just passed out, and now I had to force myself to wake up in the morning to see a bit of Sevilla. Whenever you're passing through a big city like this that you're not sure you go to again, it feels like a shame not to lose three, four hours of sleep. So you can see the beautiful cathedral, or realistically, that's what you're meant to see here. But the thing that's fascinating me way more are these trees. There's, aren't, they're everywhere. Look down. This is a main, just random street. And this isn't a weird one. This is the standard. Just everywhere here, there are oranges. And I always knew Seville had a reputation for oranges, but it's cool to see regardless. So yeah, I'm going to do a mini miniature sightseeing slash seeing a Spanish city that isn't Madrid because that's the only place I've ever really spent a lot of time. And then I'll get back to you at the airport with the, uh, the ending of this video. Or maybe it's just the beginning. No, it's the ending. I'm very tired. I need sleep. I, I woke up at... 5 a.m. yesterday and the equivalent of 6 a.m. today and I know that's that's normal for people who don't work on the internet talking about geography but it's not normal for me damn it anyway let's go see some Spanish architecture it feels weird to be in such a wet Spain right I was told in no uncertain terms that this only happens on the plane and yet here I am starting to think that's a lie by the way it's not just orange trees that impress me it's also the biggest Minecraft style tree I've ever seen it's so perfectly square. They went through all the effort of cutting that perfectly square, and then they do another one, just over there. Yeah, very interesting city, very different. I just look at trees when I go places. It's all you need to see, really. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I have an orange. Apparently, they taste terrible. You cannot eat them. You will regret it. But I kind of want to do something fun with the juice, maybe. I don't know if this one's ripe actually, but you get the idea. Beating some Sevilla uh, orange juice, marmalade, something like that. It'll be great. A fun difference from Gibraltar to Spain are these little miniature traffic lights below the main ones. So that if you're waiting at the front of a queue, you can always see which color the light is without having to strain your neck. I love it. And just like that, I'm going to border control and leaving Spain. And so the big conclusion I can take from this video is right back home because honestly right now i'm very tired see you there okay i am back home i've rested i've eaten and honestly i really enjoyed my trip i uh, do have to say though there's got to be educational merit to this to justify my extravagance and so i guess gibraltar is actually another case of a halfway house it's more proof that countries don't concretely start and end it is a part of the uk but then uh, most domestic you know flights within a place wouldn't have any immigration checking, let alone full-on stamps and operations like that. Um, and so, realistically, I would say uh, that the thing I learned from this more than anything else is that the United Nations is just a nice idea we tell ourselves about. We like to unite people into 190 countries, because then we can believe those 190 countries can come together, but ultimately, people don't neatly fit into countries. There are lots of places that exist halfway between multiple countries, or not really as part of anything, just conveniently, I guess, the closest closest thing they have is the UK and we've got their back and so isn't that enough? Uh, it's an interesting point to think about and it really makes me want to visit the rest of the weird UK territories around the world. But for now, I guess I'll say uh, that that's a bit too deep and I'll hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time and I look forward to seeing you, if you like this weird geography travel mix, in my next travel video, um, which is going to a place that both the UK and the US are very specifically telling me not to go to. So uh, looking forward to that. But for now, second channel, don't care about my life, apparently. Goodbye.